Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a wonderful new guest and her name is Krista Anderson. And as you know, it's October and this is Cancer Awareness Month. And Krista is a second time cancer survivor and she's going to tell us a little about that. And she's also going to tell us about what she does and some of the great things that she's accomplished. And she's a change maker for America's health. And she's going to tell us a little about that and also about the book um, she recently had published. So Krista, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Well, thank you, Stacey, for having me today. Appreciate your time and the opportunity and happy to talk to your listeners a little bit more about the work that I'm doing and a little bit about my background. Um, in 2009, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer and given three months to live. And wow. um, just before that, I had in 2007 diagnosed with kidney cancer, stage two. Oh my goodness. And when cancer had come back um, with a vengeance, <laughs> when the doctors gave me three months to live, you know, you kind of Fight, it's kind of fight or flight, right? You kind of yeah. go into this mode of what can I do to help save myself? And so, um, not knowing so much about health and nutrition, I really got, um, dove, dove, uh, deeply into that and learned a lot about, um, healthy eating, healthy lifestyle, which I know you are kind of an expert on as well. And, uh, as I was going through that battle, um, I quickly discovered that, finding healthier foods on the go is really hard to come by. I remember walking into a gas station and leaving empty handed many times wondering why is there never anything healthy in here? Right. Why is it so hard to find healthier foods left home? Um, so after I was healed kind of somewhat miraculously um, with modern medicine and also healthy living, um, I started this company called Healthy on the Go to help make healthier foods more accessible to Americans to help them maintain good nutrition on the go. Uh, and I know you're one to empower a lot of people on life balance because we live such a busy, hectic lifestyle. It's kind of the culture of the American dream, right? Right. Um, and so my goal is to help make healthier foods more convenient to people and more affordable um, through this mission. You know, I've, I've noticed also people sometimes don't realize the huge impact about what we put in our body, how much of an impact it has on how our body works and how our body runs. And sometimes if we, you know, like you said, you go into a gas station and there is food there, but none of it is healthy. And sometimes people just grab it anyway, because they're starving and they put it in their bodies. And then a lot, you know, they build up a lot of toxins and that could actually create illness in itself. And, you know, what was your um, big motivation to, you know, um, to, to try to make a change, you know, like when did you, did you notice a change when you started to put healthy foods in your body and you started to eat healthier? Did you notice your, your health starting to improve, even though you were doing, you know, different types of treatments for your cancer? I can't say I noticed too much of my health improving because I was so sick um, with the t the tumor. It was um, the first tumor of, of was kidney ki kidney, and then the second time it came back in my chest cavity, and it wow. shifted my heart to the left side of my chest and collapsed my right lung. So with all of that happening in my body, it was like I don't think there was really a, a good day to feel good, but to really see the difference. But I have no doubt that the holistic, cause I started seeing a holistic doctor while I was going through uh, treatment and learning about, okay, what is the foundation of this healthy lifestyle that I need? Because I never realized I was all the sugar I was intaking. I was never really eating bad. I wasn't someone who drank soda or eating chips and, you know, these really, really unhealthy items, but yeah. it was more of like the sugar sneaking in, ev in every avenue of what I was eating, you know, yeah. outside of fruit and veg. And so, um, I think, yeah, I, after I was healed, I, I do now as I'm, you know, day to day eating a very plant-based diet, like I have more energy. I, I feel great in my body. I feel just good. Like my brain isn't foggy, you know, all these things that you don't realize you just think it's just part of life, but really it's, it's part of the food we're putting in our body. And mm -hmm. It makes such a huge difference. But the fact of the matter is in, in America is you don't have access to organic 
truly healthy foods. And this is the problem. So what do people do? And, and that's what I'm fighting for. I think that's amazing. Now, before we start to talk about more about food and health and, and what you do, I just want to know what gave you the incentive and the motivation to want to heal yourself. There's so many times I, I speak with people, especially, you know, um, with different illnesses and diseases and stuff, and, and they want to give up. They become so depressed and they get angry. Why is this happening to me? You know, I don't understand, you know, what gave you the motivation to want to try to, you know, heal yourself, you know, and not get angry and not feel sorry for yourself and not fall into depression. How did you overcome that? Mm. Oh my gosh, you're making me want to cry. I love that you're bringing this topic up because this is, this is the make it or break it for people is this very this path, you're, you're at a crossroads and you're like, do I fight or do I take the poor me? Why is this happening to me? This anger that builds up that actually feeds disease even more. And for me, I was angry in the beginning and I was actually a new Christian, you know, I I was kind of on this path of learning more about God and, and how, and, and I questioned, I was like, why would this happen to me? Why would he, why would God, the universe allow this to happen to me? You know? Yeah. And so I was angry in the beginning and I was like, forget Christianity, you know, forget this whole thought process. Like, and so I first, I think the first three or four months I was so frustrated like that. And then, you know, it was like, okay, Krista, wake up. What do you want? Like, this is not how it's going to end. And what I write about in my book called claim your healing in the seven steps to clean your healing. One of the most important steps is what is going on in your mind. What are you believing? What's this mantra, this thought process. And when the doctor said, Christy, you've got maybe three months to live. There's nothing we can do. I literally (laughs) stood up in his office and I said, no, this is not how it's going to be. And I walked out pissed off, you know, and, and I said, no, like, this is not how it works. This is not how it's going to happen. Like I heard always what the doctors were saying, but I never believed that was my story. I wrote my story in this power of belief, the power of my words. I would read every day, multiple times a day. Um, you know, these mantras I had for my body that I still have memorized today. Like I spoke healing back into my body. I visualized it. So when I think some many, many times, almost always, as soon as you allow your mind to accept it, the body follows. Yes. It really does. I but, didn't believe that. Yes. And I'll just say one more thing is like you're gonna doubt, you're gonna have doubts about where what how's this gonna end? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. I remember thinking, how does this story end? When does this stop? When I was in so much pain and I never thought cancer would be gone ever. You know, it was like this long, long, long journey. I woke up in a nightmare every day. And then one day I woke up and it was over. So it's, it's just like, just hold on, but hold on to that belief that you will get through it. And yeah. the mind is so powerful. I do believe that. I believe mind over matter. I, you know, I see so many people, mm-hmm. you know, once they give up on life, that's when their health starts to decrease and, and start to fall very rapidly, you know, and, you know, I don't think people realize how much of an impact our mind has on our body. And, you know, I'm glad you didn't give up and I give kudos to you because, you know, so many people, you know, could not have gone through what you've gone through and, and the pain you endured both mentally and physically, and you, you didn't give up and, and you fought and you're here now you're, you're here, you know, and if you can give any message to somebody that, that is going through cancer and is going through, you know, a very uh, terminal illness, you know, what would you say to them to try to make them, you know, not give up and, and to t- tell them, you know, you can do it? Statistically, we use 2% of our brain. Can yeah. you imagine how powerful we would be if we used 5% of our brain? <laughs> like, <laughs> we have no idea as humans, how powerful we are truly. And I find that so fascinating is if we just, you know, take control of our thoughts and tell our brain what to think, tell our body what to do to heal, to imagine it. Um, 
if I could speak to anybody going through it, it, you know, it's, it's just this power of belief to put photos, you know, around your home of when you were healed and remind yourself where you're going. Um, start planning your victory vacation. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you you see a lot now about manifestation and I, I don't really, I mean, it's a great term, but this was what I, what I used. I read a book on positive imaging and it was during that journey. And it was seeing myself where I wanted to be and pulling that into my life. And I would say as much as you can, no matter how dark it looks, staying on this like path of this is yeah, my victory vacation, I'm going to go on. And this is what mm-hmm. it's going to feel like. This is what it's going to be like in the day that, you know, I'm fully cancer free or whatever health challenge you have when, when that's over, this is how it's going to feel like yeah. step into that feeling of victory and that new life that's going to begin. And once you're connecting with that feeling, I, I think staying there brings so much joy in that journey. And then it pulls that, that manifestation into reality. Oh, I so believe that, you know, I believe the power of positive thinking can go so far and, you know, people don't realize how strong of a terminology that is when we put it into action and we just don't say it, the power of positive thinking can actually change your life. You know, people don't realize how powerful, you know, taking out the negativity in your life and put it in the positive aspects in your life and just focusing on the positive and getting rid of the negative. And that could go so far in life as we were talking about, you know, mind over matter, you know, and and that that's connected with the power of positive thinking. And, you know, it could give you so much strength and so much ability to get through things that we think are almost impossible to get through. And you're an example of that. You're a second time, you know, recovery, uh, you know, for cancer, you know, you've overcame it twice and that's amazing in itself, you know, now you had mentioned that you, you came, you would go to gasoline stations or you run to a, a fast food place, you know, or a place, you know, convenience store, and you try to grab something that was semi-healthy or healthy and you couldn't find anything. And, you know, it's funny that you say that because when I was in Europe, A lot of the foods that we have in America, they banned in Europe. And when I was in France, you could not get a lot of the food that, you know, because you mentioned that you currently live in France right now. You couldn't get any, like half the food that they sell in America are banned in Europe. I went to Italy, same thing. It was banned in, 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 uh, in Italy as well. So, you know, it's, it's, we get our food industry in America, you know, they just, a lot of, a lot of them don't care. They just want the big buck, you know, but people don't realize how how much these foods can destroy our health and how they can cause cancer. Because, you know, I'm sure you're aware of it because you're, you're in the industry. Some of these foods with colored dyes, the colored dyes itself can cause cancer, you know? So Mm -hmm. I'm sure this made you mad because you overcame cancer, you know, you're trying to eat healthy. You see the impact of how healthy eating can change the way you feel. And then you look around and so many of the foods are not healthy. So you talked about how you created, you know, a different way of eating and, you know, you have created products. So can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. And I love what you're saying there because, you know, just to add to that is I'm, you know, in Wisconsin right now visiting my family and I honestly am in a, just sad by the the access to food healthy foods here everywhere I go there's nothing I can eat really truly yeah. that I would want to eat it, there's nothing organic the big Walmart super center here I've even thought to go to the manager and say hey like why is there nothing organic barely anything organic in their store you know and yeah. you know going out to a restaurant I order a soup and salad thinking okay this is gonna be the healthiest thing for me to eat right and uh you know I, I sit at I get the soup and salad. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking how many chemicals are on this lettuce, you know, yeah. like I'm thinking about all of this because these chemicals change the DNA in our body and do. create these chemical, you know, these cell compounds and develop cancer. Right. So right. like, what, do, what do people do? This is the problem we have. And, and you're right. Europe is amazing in that there's no GMOs over there, like compared to the U S and it is a system made upon money. And so yeah, I, I agree with you. And that's the change that's much needed, but you're at this, at the, at the power, the fight against the powers of these big 
contracted food and beverage companies like the Cokes of the World, Frito-Lay, they pay big money for space in stores, on shelves. Yeah. Um, and these are long-term contracts that it's hard to get get that changed. So it's really, it's really difficult. So anyway, I just had to add that, but tell me again, what was your question? Because I was like, yes, this is our problem. Well, you were mentioning that you're a change maker for health because you've created a different way of on the go eating, you know? So tell us a little more about that. Like what you've done to try to make, you know, the world, especially in the United States, a little bit healthier. So what have you done? You were mentioning about products and on the go type of products. Yeah. So when I started my company in 2014, um, I basically searched and seeked out America's top healthy snack products. Now snacking is, you know, secondary to what fresh food is more powerful, right. For your health, but 80% of con consumers snack every day yes. and 50% of us in America stop at a gas station every day. So right. how do we make this moment healthier? How do we make healthier foods more accessible? So my idea was gas stations are in every corner. This is the best way to create access. Um, and so finding these, the best healthy snack products, I utilize my experience through cancer. Like, is this, when I look at and vet each product that, you know, goes into our healthy on the go merchandising displays and planograms across the country is you know, is this made from nature? Can you potentially make this in your kitchen? Is it, you know, there's no man-made ingredients. There's no additives, no colorings like you're talking about natural flavors. There's up to over a hundred chemicals that can hide behind this one phrase, natural flavor, you know? Yes. So like, does it have any of that in it? So those products cannot come into this planogram. Um, and so then, uh, yeah, we partner with hospitals, universities, airports, corporate cafeterias, and of course, gas stations, as I mentioned, across the country with these healthy on the go merchandising dis displays that we put into those environments. And my third year in business, Michelle Obama nominated uh, my company uh, for Catalyst for Change for America's Health. Awesome. Um, which is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was as a little, little, you know, business in Franklin, Tennessee, you know, in the middle of nowhere, uh, it was really an honor to be oh, yeah. know, nominated for that in the work that we're doing, but it's a big work. So now tell us some of the products, some of the products that you sell, you know, to give people an idea of, you know, what you're doing. Um, so some of the products we've got, uh, well, there's a new brand I'm really excited about. We just are signing contract with now based in California mm -hmm. and it's called BTR Nation. It's um, a better food bar, a nutritional bar. So the founder, uh, Ashley Nicholson, her parents both died of cancer and she found herself in hospitals, staring at the vending machine in the cafeteria, like, okay, there's nothing healthy here. I can grab to just snack in between a meal. And so this is what caused her to start this company. And she's kind of starting for the fighting for the same cause. So yeah. um, this, her bars are amazing. They taste indulgent, like it shouldn't be healthy, but they are, they, right. they taste really good. Um, I work with also, you know, a company called uh, skinny dipped, which are kind of cacao dusted almonds and in these types of things. So it's still healthy, but a little bit indulgent, right. um, you've got that chocolate sensation. So we've, I've got about 10 companies I work with in a portfolio of about 40 products. Um, and looking forward to bringing some in from Europe in the future, because as you mentioned, the quality is much better. Oh, the quality is a hundred percent better. I, you know, I was, I was just overwhelmed when I saw, you know, how many of the foods were banned. Oh, we don't sell that here because of X, Y, and Z. You know, you know, one of the things that really bugged me is that the market in the United States, and I'm sure you're aware of, but a lot of people I don't think are aware, you know, no added antibiotics in, you know, no this, no that, but they say no added. So that means they have antibiotics, let's say chicken or eggs, but they didn't mm -hmm. add any more additional, but then people see no antibiotics added, uh, you know, uh, 
and no additional antibiotic biotics added. And they think right away quickly when they're looking at it, oh, there's no antibiotics in this, but there is the antibiotics in the eggs of the chicken. It's just not additional, you know, so little things like that. And then, you know, sometimes they, you know, it has the organic, certain organic, you know, um, stamps on it, but it's not purely organic. It just meets some of the qualifications. So it gets a certain type of stamp on it, but it's not purely organic, you know? So people, you know, by the word in people get sometimes tricked and thinking it's a healthy product when it's not that healthy at all. Well, and I would, you know, there's, two topics that come to mind when you talk about this is the plant-based meat movement that's happening. I mean, yeah. these are just man-made chemical-based products, the majority of them. Yeah. That in my mind is in the future, what disease is this going to develop? What new disease is going to develop out of these products? And you think, oh, it's plant-based, it's, you know, it's meatless, so it's got to be healthy. Right. Or they, they use these marketing terms. America, this is something different from the U.S. and Europe also, is in Europe, you cannot market a product the same way you can in the U.S. In the U.S., right. you can get away with saying that it does all these things for you, and, and it's it doesn't. And so that's the thing. Just because it says it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. Just because it's organic doesn't mean it's healthy. And the other thing I would add is the wine industry is so many people, when you ask them, you hold up a bottle of wine and you say, what's in this bottle? Right. And they think it's great. It's just grapes. Yes. It's not. There's up to over a hundred chemicals also approved to be used in the winemaking process. Yes. And this is something that it's like a medicine in a bottle at the end of the day to taste, change the taste, the color, the, the everything, <laughs> you know? Right. Yes. So, it's, it's an education. We have to be our own, our own nutritionist, right? Our yeah. own doctor. And I tell people that all the time, you know, do the research, you know, and I always say, look at the ingredients. If you can't say the words, then obviously it's, it's not good for you. And then with some products, you don't have to mention all the ingredients. As long as you mention a certain percentage, then it's okay. And that it gets passed, you know, like even laundry detergent, we put laundry detergent in our clothes and then the clothes go onto our body, you know, but they don't realize that, you know, not all the chemicals have to be listed, you know, and some of those chemicals are really toxic, you know, and the same thing with the food industry, they do the same type of tactic, you know, in the United States. Now, you know, so you're, you're, have you distributed throughout the United States with your products, with all these people yeah. that you have, you know, uh, aligned with? Yeah. So, um, truth be told, I actually had, so we partner right now with distributors and they deliver to all the stores for us, um, or the locations. And a couple of, about two, three years ago, I had a distributor actually basically steal my whole 80% of my company. They took all my mm. merchandising displays. They changed the signs on it to uh, a different name and changed all the products to a kind of a better for you, more unhealthy section. And I lost almost my whole business. And oh, this was goodness. actually a part, this was a big part of why I moved to the South of France was I had been living in France, um, or I had visited France for a filming of a TV show for my brand uh, in the U.S. And I fell in love with the culture and this slow living and the balance. And you know, we sat around the table for three hours at lunch during you know the filming project. And I was like, oh my god, I've never sat at a table this long. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to get to work? Like you know, I was like, this they're is very so relaxed new. in Europe. It's yeah. Then. Yeah. And what's funny about the French culture is you can sit at the table for that amount of time and they will talk about food the whole entire time. Like it's, it's to me, I remember the first time I was like, I have never sat and talked about the food that we're eating or about food, the topic in general, yeah. while having a family meal or, you know, meal with friends. Like it was just, there's this, you know, everything feeds off of this moment at the table. And so yeah. it changed my life really. And that was at the point of losing the majority of my company. But what I realized, and I know this is a big topic you talk about with the clients you coach, and you're very passionate about this, which is why I'm so happy to have this conversation with you today, because we are chasing after this American dream. Yeah. And for what? At, for what? Like at the, for fame, for success, for money, for our, our ego. Like I was this person, 100%. Yeah. 
all wrapped up in that. It was all about me and it was all about what I was doing. I didn't have time for family, for friends. The way I reduced my stress was a glass of wine or two or a, half a bottle at the end of each day. Like it was a mess. I wasn't healthy. Yeah. And I realized from the French culture and you could use the Latin culture in general, this way of nobody cares what, who you are, what you do for work, how much money you have. They want to know, you know how to enjoy life. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know? And that really just stopped me. And, and that's the message I have today for people is like, what are we fighting? Why do we fight to climb this? Because our culture teaches us this is the way to live. Yeah. And that's the sad thing. That's what our, our culture has become, you know, it, and, and you see it in, with the new generations, especially, you know, the stigmatism in the United States is how much fame, you know, how good you look, you know, how much money you're making, fame, fortune, you know, power, you know, power. But the, this is, you know, you can't take this when you go to the other side, you know, it, while we're here, we should really be, have gratitude and we should really appreciate who we have, well, who we have around us, the life we live and enjoy it while, while we're here. And people have the concept in the United States, it's all mixed up. You know, it's, it's just the priorities are out of line and, and it's really, it's hurting everybody, you know, and it's all about making money, power, you know, looking, looking good. And, 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 you know, but these things are, you know, you might look good on the outside, but do you feel good on the inside? You know, power. Okay. You have power. What are you going to do with that power? Are you going to put it to good use to help other people, which most people don't, they use it for themselves because they become greedy and, you know, they lose the concept of what, you know, what power really is about. If you have power and you can do good things, why not spread the love and, and help others who don't have what you have and people don't do that, you know, and the stigmatism of, you know, uh, of looking beautiful. And like we mentioned before, just like I said, you know, it's not how you feel, look on the outside. It's how you feel on the inside. And, um, you know, it's eating away our health. It's eating away our mentality, you know, and people are just destroying themselves very slowly, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's sad, you know, and I like the mentality of the Europeans. I, you know, I even said to my husband, when we came back home, I said, you know what, I'll, I could sell lemons and tomatoes on the, on the corner of the street. <laughs> I I'll, I'll downgrade my life and just live there forever. You know, I'll just look at that crystal blue water and I'll be happy. You know, <laughs> that's so funny. Cause when I first moved or I was moving there in the process, my cousin, she's like, I think Krista, you'll be happier selling goat cheese at the market. <laughs> You know, but I, you know, I have a question for you because I wrote this down before our, our call here is here's the thing is I'm, I'm writing an, another book right now. It's called escaping the American dream. Yeah. Not everybody's going to, you know, get on the airplane and move their life over to Europe or to France or Italy. And that's not the answer completely. Right. It was for me, but how does one live this life we're talking about on the other side. It's a life I never knew existed until I saw another culture, until I stepped out of the United States. Right. Because in the US, you know, even being back here for this month for work, I feel pressure. I'm back in this game, in this race. I'm a product of this society that's been created by governments or powers that be, right? Yeah. And how does one have or find that balance to live this life that we're talking about how do you escape the american dream so to speak and live against the grain of a culture that's constantly penetrating you every single day to live a different way i think we have to stop thinking about the dollar bill and we have to really take a step back and figure out who we are as a person and what really makes us happy you know, mm -hmm. what is our purpose in life? What makes me happy? What gives me the the will to want to get out of bed and, and do something, you know, you know, it's, you know, so many people get up in the morning and they go to work and they, they hate going to what their job that they're doing. And they just have, they wake up with negativity right then and there. And, it, and, you know, you want to roll out of bed and you want to be happy when the, when the sun rises, you want to have a purpose in life. You want to, it's, it's doing what makes you happy. And the, I think the biggest, for me, the biggest thing was self-achievement, 
and helping others. You know, when, the first time I ever changed somebody else's life, I had such a feeling of accomplishment, such a feeling, a good feeling that I was able to do something good for somebody else. And I think sometimes we have to step back and not think about us, the me, 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 and start mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, how can I help others? Once you start helping others and you start, you know, stop, you, you, you stop about thinking about finances, finances will destroy a person. They could destroy relationships. They could destroy your life. You know, they can destroy your health. Start thinking about, you know, how you can make yourself happy as a person, your purpose in life. You know, we all have a true purpose in life and it's not about money. It's not about power. You know, we have, we all have special strengths within us and finding those strengths and then using them for something good for something you know and be have gratitude and like we said be positive and you know stop you know and just be happy what we have you know and stop always wanting so many people they reach their goal and they want more they want more they want more and that's not what life's about we only we don't know how long life is going to give us we don't know if we're going to be here the next day we expect that we're going to be here the next day but we really don't know how long our lifeline is so while we're here, why don't we make the best of it? Why don't we be happy? And if you're not happy with yourself, then figure out what's the root cause, why I'm not happy, you know, and then, and learn how to, you know, change that and be happy and stop thinking about, about the materialistic things and start thinking more in the spirituality, you know, and I, I think that's one of the, the main things, you know, is really doing things that make you happy. And if you see in Europe, they do things constantly for the family, for the friends, the door is always open. You know, they're always feeding everybody. They're always helping and caring for people. And it's a great feeling, you know, it's not about me, 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 or what do I have and what kind of car do I drive? It's about just enjoying the moment and they enjoy the moment. You know, they live life on a very monotone way. They enjoy their food. They enjoy their friends. The door is always open. People are coming in and out. You know, they're always giving. They don't care about receiving. And that's, I think, one of the main things. I completely agree. I think I've had so much fun getting to know the French people and, and the Italians. Like, I love going because Italy is only a two-hour drive from where right. I'm at. And, and I'm like, I love going there because you go into a restaurant and you feel like you're part of the family. Yeah. You know, the whole restaurant by the end of the night and you're drinking limoncello with them, you know, it's true. You, you don't, it's just, it's just another way of living. And I think we can learn and take pieces from every culture, you know, yeah. the Italian the French culture, it's not perfect. It's got its issues too. Right. But there's pieces that can be kind of quilted together to create your own life. And you kind of have to step outside of your day to day. And, and like, I have a friend of mine right now that he just left the uh, Nashville. He's um, married, happily married, but he said, I need, I need three week pause by myself, you know, and I've heard Matthew McConaughey does this too, you know, 12 days out of each year, he goes away by himself and, you know, just kind of discover who you are and other cultures and, and kind of really this path of finding yourself and what do you enjoy. And, yeah. you know, he's on this journey now uh, in Europe for the next three weeks, you know, just turned off work. He said, yes. I'm, I'm leaving. I don't care what it takes. I'm leaving. And I think that this, you know, no matter where we go or it's just turning it off and, yeah. and take a moment to, you know, like you said, to answer all these questions you just said like what brings me joy and happiness and you know I think so. I think everyone needs to renew themselves at some point you know when you step you out change. of it yeah I, you definitely change you definitely change for the better you know now your book what is that you you talk about yet you wrote a book you wrote a guide tell me more about your book that you wrote um so claim your healing is a very small like 40 something page gift book um mm -hmm. I call it the battle book mm -hmm. so it was I wrote it mainly because I had a lot of people coming to me and I it, and I still do you know how did you overcome cancer with with the situation you're in and so I was like all right let me just put this all on paper um and the book is like 5.99 it's I don't make, you know, anything off of this. Um, it's just so people have a tool and a resource, but yeah. it has the seven steps to clean your healing in it that I use to overcome cancer. And then the affirmations I use that I spoke over my, my life, my body, my, my, for healing. 
um, and things like that. I, I, that's why I called the battle book because it's a tool to fight. And on the front cover, it's like, it's kind of very Harry Potter, but it was a vision I had of, you know, I, it's me with this huge sword of Solomon in the ground. And it's like, mm-hmm. this is what you're up against. Like, this is how the battle looks and you got to fight. And so, um, yeah, that's, it's been a huge blessing for a lot of people, I think. And I'm really grateful to have, you know, a second chance at life to help kind of turn around and extend, you know, a hand to help people through their journey. So yeah, you know, I think it's a, a blessing that you were able to be a, a two-time, you know, cancer survivor. You know, you know, I I saw my uncle pass from cancer and and you know, he went from from being a regular sized man to a twig in three weeks. You know, cancer could mm-hmm. come at you very aggressively, but you know, if you have the right mentality and you do the right things for yourself you have a chance of surviving, you know, and I, so when I see the cancer community, you know, I, I recognize from all the different communities that I've worked with, with all different illnesses, the cancer community is the one group that holds such a positive impact. I'm going to survive. I'm going to get through this. You know, you don't see that all the time in many different illnesses, but I think that's why you see so many people survive because their mentality to survive is there, their strength, their going to do it they're going to do it they can do it you know and they don't give up you know and they keep fighting and fighting and fighting and I that's you know I think what you did you know you weren't going to give up you didn't stop you said I'm gonna I'm gonna survive you know and you were in stage four you do that's like a miracle you were in stage four cancer and you were able to overcome it which is 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 it's, I'm just speechless, you know, that's a major, major miracle in itself, you know, and there's a purpose for you in life and you're doing it right now, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, if you had to tell people, you know, if you had to give advice to people who are just diagnosed with cancer, like what would be your, your tips for somebody? Because, you know, when you're diagnosed, that's overwhelming, you know, they the person, their mouth drops and they are overwhelmed. And the, you know, the worst scenarios probably come through their head and they get scared. I'm sure like you felt all those feelings. How would you, you know, from, from being diagnosed with it, how would you help somebody? You know, what advice would you give somebody if someone came to you and said, oh my God, I just been diagnosed with cancer. What would you tell them? Yeah, it's a, it's a whirlwind. I mean, it's <laughs> because I think the, the hard part is, you know, you, if, for example, if you're a mom, you're diagnosed with breast cancer, or just giving an example, you've got your husband, you take care of your family, your, you know, your children, you take care of, and then you've got this new problem in your life. You're like, okay, now how do I eat? What do I eat? You know, that's a whole new, for most people, it's this new journey of nutrition and learning about that. That's an endless amount of research and information. And then you've got this medical side and you're like, most people, they go to their regular doctor and they just use their hometown medical doctors that to me personally is not always the answer. I always tell everybody, go get a second opinion. For one, doctors are humans. <clears throat> they don't have all the information. This mm-hmm. is your life we're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, when I went, um, when I had my sec- the second cancer and I had to have my most of my lung removed on my right side, like I, I searched online for days to find the best thoracic surgeon in this country. And I found him and he's still ranked as that today. And I went to MD Anderson in Houston, which is the number one cancer center in the U S because of all the difficult cases they see and the, you know, the technology they have. And, and so I went there, I didn't have any money, you know, at this time I'd lost my job. I was paying a lot of money for health insurance, the American cancer society, which is now a partner of mine with my work. Um, they helped me along, you know, give, introducing me to resources through their organization that could help pay for things. Um, you know, they they have so much, uh, resources, that organization for people, but I would say it's, you know, it's, it's hard not to get overwhelmed, but to have a second opinion, to fight for that, do your research, join a Facebook group, uh, you know, these there's, you know, healing 
cancer um, naturally, I think is a gr- huge, huge group on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, that is nice to go, be in to, to learn about this side of it and how to fight with that. I would never recommend going full new natural medicine to mm-hmm. fight cancer. I've never seen personally, and I'm working in this industry. Yeah. Um, never seen it really work all the time for people. And yeah. I've lost, I've lost two friends to cancer from going that route. And so, yeah. um, but I would say find people that have are going through maybe the similar cancer that you can talk to, learn what they're doing, get that second opinion and yeah, the power, the power of belief and being your own doctor. Yeah. That's amazing. Now you have a website. Uh, can you tell people about your website and where they can find it? Yeah. So my company website is sstar.us and uh, that's E S S T A R.us. Uh, my personal uh, website is kristaanderson.co. And this is a little, mostly about my journey uh, in France. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then of course on Instagram, both of those um, are the same for the Instagram, Facebook. Now, if people are interested in getting your products, like where can they find them? You know? Yeah. Um, gosh, right now, we're transitioning to build an online website for okay. Healthy on the Go um, is what I'm working on because we've mostly been direct to retail. So, uh, gosh, I mean, you can look for us in, in airports, um, how some hospitals are trying to push that needle forward more um, in convenience stores. Yeah. Just look for my face. <laughs> it's on the sign. You'll recognize me, um, hopefully. And then the healthy on the go logo. So when you're on the go, hopefully you'll, you'll find us. So I'll have the logo healthy on the go and I'll have most likely you'll see your face. And, and then what is the company's name that you use? You just use healthy on the go, or do you have like a a company name on the label that they could look for? So because we're partnering with other companies, other Mm -hmm. brands are my, my company's not listed on the packaging, Mm -hmm. but you'll see a huge banner sign. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the store. All right. So it'll be a a healthy, you'll, you'll see the banner, you'll see your face, you'll see healthy on the go. And then you'll see all the products that you, that you've partnered with companies that have actual healthy products that people should focus on more than just focusing on this junk food that they find in convenience stores and throughout the stores that they, you know, are actually eating, but are actually destroying their bodies at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think what you're doing is great. I commend you so much. You know, you are amazing. You really are. And, you know, I, I'm so glad that you came on the show and you shared your story, which I think is going to give a lot of encouragement to many men and women who suffer from cancer or are just diagnosed with cancer, because, you know, it's a, it's a devastating disease and it most you know, mentally and physically, it takes a toll on somebody. And so, you know, just your voice of encouragement, I think is going to go a long way helping others. And, you know, and these products, you know, you, t- you took a tragedy and you turned it into something positive and now you're helping others, you know, and I always say, that's the big thing is taking a tragedy and not falling into that pity party. And then so going from tragedy to positivity, and then from that positiveness, you turn it into something good and then you use it to help others. And that's exactly what you did. So, you know, I give you, I give you kudos and thank you so much for being on our show. I appreciate everything. (laughs) And if you want to, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you're very welcome. And if there's, is there one other thing or a couple of things you'd like to tell the audience before we go? I think that's it. I mean, I'm just incredibly impressed with the work that you're doing and how you're empowering your listeners and and your clients that you're coaching. And I, I, like I said, in the, in the beginning is when I heard, you know, a video that you did or talk you did on about life balance and, and how we're caught up in this work, work, work mentality. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not talked about enough. Like we need yeah. to have this conversation. And so I, I love that you're doing that. I think it's, you know, it's kind of the the catalyst to health problems. So I think this is a great topic to be brought to light and to kind of remind people, you know, and, and to let them know there's another way to live. Yeah, It doesn't have to be this way that culture teaches us and that we're penetrated with. So 
yeah, I just, I love what you're doing. You're Thank a world you. changer too. And I'm happy to meet you and, you know, keep shining that light and, and helping people. So it's, it's been a great opportunity. Thank you for your platform to share my story. And oh, you're and very welcome. And thank you. You know, I, I think you're a truly amazing individual and, you know, I, I, I praise you. I really do. Cause everything you've done, you know, and everything you've gone through, you know, you, you turned it around and, and you're doing something really wonderful. That's going to help, you know, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people. So, you know, kudos to you and, you know, thank you once again for being on our show. I, I, I thank you so much for everything. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You have a great day.